On tonight's North Fulton Prep Rally, the biggest game from the area was a big one for Alpharetta. The Raiders come from behind to beat Centennial. We'll tell you what that means for the Knights and the Raiders. Elsewhere, Chattahoochee and South Forsyth hits friends and neighbors in Class 4A, but the Cougars are still big brother. Brian and Nathan explain what that means for the Hooch. Those highlights coming up, and we've still got Little St. Francis too. Who else is bringing you action just from your side of the county? It's all us on Fayette Prep Rally right now. Comcast presents your source for North Fulton High School sports. This is North Fulton Prep Rally. Hello and welcome to another edition of North Fulton Prep Rally, your weekly high school sports program featuring the very best North Fulton High School action. I'm Brian Wise, joined alongside by Nathan Shutter. You can catch us here on Comcast Channel 25 year-round, weeknights at 6, 8, and 10. And Nathan, we still have one final week left in the regular season. But one region champion has already been crowned as we get to our keys to the weekend. Raiders clinch the Region 6 title. Big win for Alfreda. They defeat Centennial 32-26. They actually trailed 26-3 in this ballgame, but come back to get the Region 6 title. Who turns a shutout win? Big win over South Forsyth, 34 to nothing. Eighth straight victory for Chattahoochee this season. North Springs drops 5-3A. Yeah, North Springs football to announce that they're not going to be playing a region schedule in 2012 and 2013. I think that's probably a good thing. They don't have an official on-the-field win since 2008. I think it's good if you want to build a program. you got to get a little confidence, a couple wins in there. And I think this will be good for the North Springs program. Yeah, get started from the ground up. All right, now let's get to the highlights. And we start things off at Alpharetta, where the Raiders were looking for the school's first region title taking on Centennial. First quarter action, Knights opening drive. The give is to tailback Zetrick Smith who finds a big hole up the middle, breaks a tackle and finally gets brought down near the 35. Later in the drive, it's Jimmy Meyer with the quarterback keeper from a yard out and the Knights take an early 6-0 lead. Ensuing possession, Josh Dobbs back to pass, throws to the left. The ball is tipped not once but twice right in the hands of Matt Deshaun for the interception. Deshaun is going to take it to the house. Centennial up 12 to nothing. Second quarter now, Knights threatening again. The give is to Zetrick Smith who shoots right up the middle and the Knights are in control 20 to nothing. Alpharetta would respond. Dobbs back to pass, dumps the ball off to Jalen Simmons out of the backfield. Simmons has blockers in front of him and gets the ball down near midfield for the Raiders. Later in the drive, the Raiders would get a 24-yard field goal from Lehman Howington. Raiders trailing 20-3. Centennial would extend their lead here as Meyer rolls out to his right, connects in the end zone with Zetrick Smith, Knights up 26-3. Late in the half, Alpharetta inside the five. The give is to Simmons who punches it into the end zone. Alpharetta down 26-9 at the half. Second half now, Dobbs back to pass. Throws complete across the middle to a wide open James Youngblood who heads down the sideline and into Knights territory. Later in the drive, it's from one yard out, it's Dobbs with the quarterback keeper. Alpharetta's climbing back into the game 26-15. The Raiders defense would hold the Knights on their next possession. The punt is blocked and bounces in the end zone. Heads up play by Meyer to knock the ball out for the safety. After the free kick, the give is to Michael Polk who finds a huge hole as he gets the ball down inside the 15-yard line. A few plays later, Dobbs back to pass. He's going to find Carlos Burst wide open in the end zone. Raiders are just down by 2, 26-24, and with 43 seconds remaining, Dobbs would connect with Simmons for the go-ahead touchdown. Alpharetta came all the way back, wins this one 32-26. Huge win, Nathan, for Alpharetta. Uh, unbelievable win for the Raiders, getting their first football region title in school history. A very young program, has, has, an, has only been playing a region schedule for a couple of years. To come out and do it in this fashion, trailing 26-3 against a team as good as Centennial, and to come all the way back and win it, just a great job for Alpharetta in this one. Yeah, they won it in grand fashion, that is right. Now, the loss is definitely deflating to Centennial. Will this have any long-term effects on the program? I don't think so. They've had a couple of tough losses this year and they've been able to bounce back. This team has shown mental toughness all year long. They have one regular season game left. They go out and take care of business on Friday night. They'll be the number uh, three seed in the playoffs. Probably on the road at Lasseter in the first round, which will be a very tough game. But hey, you're in the state playoffs. Anything can happen on Friday night. You just got to get there. All right. Well, let's get back to the highlights in the Chattahoochee Cougars. They've been on fire since dropping the season opener and they look to continue their good run on the road at South Forsyth. First quarter, fourth and goal to pitches to Hunter Begley who gets to the edge and is denied just shy of the goal line. On the ensuing possession, Hooch with the ball. Travis Marshall rolls right, decides to keep. He's going to cut up field, redirect back across the field. And he's going to get the ball down deep into War Eagle territory. 
couple of plays later, the handoff goes to C.J. Leggett, who takes it outside to the right, finds a hole, and into the end zone for the touchdown. Cougars up 7 to nothing. Last play of the first quarter, Cougars with the ball. Marshall back to pass, throws deep over the middle of the field. Wide open is Marcus Sales. Sales is going to score on this one. 78 yards on the pass and catch. Pooch up 14 to nothing after one. South Forsyth now in Cougar territory. The give is to Delback, who has the ball knocked out by Stephen Fullerton. Picked up by Connor Wynn, and Wynn is off on a foot race to the end zone. Got one man to beat. Touchdown Cougars. They now lead 21 to nothing. Late in the second quarter, Hooch deep in their own territory. The direct snap is Chase Nelson. Fighting his way through the line, comes out of the pile, still on his feet. No one is going to catch Nelson. 97 yards on the run. Hooch up big, 27 to nothing after the missed PAT. Wildcat formation kicking in there. Third quarter, War Eagles with the ball. It's Jansen Jeffrey back to pass. Hit as he throws. Connor Wynn comes up from the safety position with the interception. Wynn is going to take it to the house. Cougars win big on the road here. They win 34 to nothing. And Nathan, not much was expected out of Chattahoochee this season. Are you surprised to see the Cougars doing this well? I'm really surprised personally. I'm sure the coaches and players over at Chattahoochee are not surprised at all. But when you think about the number of players they lost off last year's state championship team, and to be able to come back and be on the verge of a region title, Lambert lost this past Friday night to Rome, breaking that three-way tie. If Chattahoochee can win at Rome this Friday night, that would give them the region championship because they have the tiebreaker with Johns Creek. Just an unbelievable, after losing that opening game to Lambert, which we kind of thought that it'd take them a little bit to get going. They lost that opener. They haven't lost since. This team looks really good heading towards the state playoffs. Yeah, they're rolling and clicking at the right time. More highlights now as we check in on a new program here in North Fulton as the St. Francis Knights went on the road to Lanier, who's located in Gwinnett County. It was senior night for the Lanier Longhorns, and Longhorns with the ball first quarter. The pitch is to Dante Borders, who gets around the right edge, Finds a seam and heads down the sideline. Beat the only man left and touchdown Longhorns. They lead seven to nothing. On the ensuing Knights possession, third down, Joey Roche with the option keeper to the left side. He's going to get Brett brought down by Jesse Landers. Later in the quarter, Taylor Grant back to pass. Throws over the middle. Coming out of nowhere is Lake McClure with the interception. The Longhorn defense would step up big. Roche back to pass and gets brought down by Anselmo Huerta. After the punt, the Longhorns with the ball, Lake McClure shoots through the middle and brings down Grant for the sack. A couple of plays later, the pitch to the left is to Bernard Knuckles, who finds a nice hole on that side. He's going to get a nice pickup here. Later in the drive, the give is to Knuckles again, who finds a hole up the middle into the end zone for the touchdown. Lanier rolls 41 to nothing over St. Francis. And Nathan, that was a tough loss for St. Francis. Uh, but the big picture is more important here for this team. Absolutely. Both of these teams were our second year programs playing non-region schedules. The difference is St. Francis will eventually end up in Region 5 single A. Lanier will be a triple A school probably only for two years before they move into 5A. So much uh, larger population over at Lanier. So this game wasn't too surprising that St. Francis lost this bad. But it's, it's about the big picture. It's about building your program, getting the experience, and playing Teams like Lanier will make you better in the long run. Look at teams like Kings Ridge, who were on the verge of making the playoffs this year, just two years into the GHSA uh, single-A uh, competition. Yeah, that's how you got to get it. Now you know what the competition level is like. Time now to recap the rest of Week 10 football action from around North Fulton. We start things off with the Johns Creek Gladiators. Big win defeating Northwest Whitfield 24-18. They clinched the number two seed for the state playoffs. Still have a shot at that region title. Northwest Whitfield scored a touchdown with a minute to play to make things a little more interesting, but Johns Creek in control of this one. Too many penalties for the Gladiators, though. 13 of them for 117 yards. Also had two fumbles, but the offense piled up 315 total yards to get the win. Milton. Yeah, they defeat North Forsyth 30-14. Eagles took a 16-7 halftime lead thanks to a special team safety. Milton scored two second-half touchdowns, Polk and Lestrange on that one. Raiders score with 33 seconds left to make the final margin what it was. A win versus Roswell this week will clinch the number four seed in the state playoffs for Milton. Speaking of Roswell. Yeah, they lost to West Forsyth 35-14. Roswell gave up a touchdown just 40 seconds into the game. They were able to battle back and tie things up at seven. Hornets fought hard and kept the game within two touchdowns until the Wolverines scored late. Facing their first winless season in 61 years, they have a lot to play for this Friday night. Sitting at 0-9, they don't want to be 0-10. Plus Trinity. They defeat South Atlanta 28-8. Titans took advantage of the sloppy weather by rushing for 257 yards. Jordan Denson rushed for 90 yards and two touchdowns. 
Sam Roberts added 98 yards and a touchdown. The defense also forced four turnovers. Blessed Trinity will face Buford for the Region 6 title this Friday night. Wolves won the first meeting 42 to nothing. And Kings Ridge. They lose to Holy Innocence 35 to 21, but they played a heck of a game. This drops the Tigers to number four in the subregion. Had to finish in the top three for a shot at the state playoffs. They trailed 28 to seven at the half, but rallied for a 14 to seven advantage in the second half. Bailey Miller completed 11 of 24 passes, 155 yards and two touchdowns. Devin Schmidt, another big game, 93 yards receiving and a touchdown. All right, well, let's get back to Johns Creek. How impressed have you been with them this season? I thought they were going to be a good team this year. They had a lot of pieces coming back on offense. I think the defense has been the most impressive part. They have really been able to shut a couple teams down, including Lambert, to create that three-way tie and that big game. And then they're, you know, they're, they put themselves in a position to win a region championship. They're going to have to get a little help from Rome, and they're going to have to win their game as well. But worst case scenario, they're the number two seed out of the region. They have a home playoff game in just their second year of region competition. That's amazing at the 4A level. Yes, that's impressive, and they have been all year. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Catch us back here on Comcast Channel 25 next week for game highlights and features. And be sure to like North Fulton Prep Rally on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter to see what's happening on the show. For Nathan Shutter, I'm Brian Wise. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you under the lights. Grab some wood there, bub.